why Werewolf by Night was the perfect Victorial debut for you. And were you a fan of the comic? Getting to do Werewolf by Night is perfect for me because I loved it as a kid. I still have my comics that I bought when I was, a, a you know, whatever, nine years old, eight years old. I still have those. So when I was having this conversation with Kevin Feige about directing and he was like, well, what would you want to do? And I'm like, Werewolf by Night, of course. And he was just like, wait, what? And I was like, yes, I love that. So for me, it's perfect, not only for that reason, but also because every Saturday while I was growing up, my brother and I would be in front of that television watching monster movies. That's what we did. That's what we lived on. That's what I grew up with. And I love them so much. And I love them because they are not just scary and thrilling and all of that, but they they're emotional too. And they're about people with problems that need help. And I was always upset when the monsters were being chased and killed and all of that, because I kept thinking like, wait a minute, nobody wants to be a monster. These, these are people that need help and assistance. Why aren't you, you know? So there was a great empathy I had for them. And, and, and I thought that there would be an interesting track we could take with this story, which, which delved into that area of the story. You touched on this a bit, but what was your vision for the story and your approach to unfolding it? You know, I wanted Werewolf by Night to simply be, first and foremost, a love letter to all of those movies I watched growing up and loved. The Universal Horror movies, the Hammer films, the Godzilla movies, Ultraman, uh, King Kong, uh, Planet of the Apes, uh, Poltergeist. All of this stuff to me was what I, I loved. And I, what I loved about most of them was that they had a heart to them. They understood what humanity was. They understood what empathy was. And I wanted this to be a reflection of that. You know, more than anything else, I wanted it to be a reflection of that, that, that idea of what it means to look someone in the eye and try to understand them and, and, and understand what is going on behind them as opposed to just labeling labeling them as a monster and wanting to destroy them. To me, I don't know. There's too much of that in our world as it is, and I wanted to go the other way with it. As far as the MCU goes, how does this character, Jack, fit into the timeline? Ha. Huh. Well, uh, we're going to find out, aren't we? Uh, Jack Russell fits into the MCU timeline just like everyone else is, like, because just because it's in black and white, just because it's old doesn't mean it's not current. Uh, and he is existing alongside of everyone else we know and love in the MCU right now. Uh, but we chose to just tell this story of one night in the life of Jack and Elsa. That's really what I wanted to do. Just tell the story of one night in the life of Jack and Elsa, not get caught up in how he's connected here or how he's going to be connected there. We'll find out some point, but let's just worry about this right now. Why is the retro film look a good pairing for the story? I think a film like Werewolf by Night being in black and white, feeling like it's hearkening back to those films of old days of the 30s uh, that we all grew up on. I feel like it gave us license to push a little further into the horror realm that maybe we would have been able to had it been just full on color in your face. You know, I, I think at every step of the way, whenever I wanted to do something that might have been like completely off from what they normally do in these films, like they just they backed me. They were like, go for it. Do it. If that's what you want to do, do it. No one told me no. And I have to say that 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 I'm very grateful for that because I feel like we were able to create an experience for the audience that is different that is unique and something hopefully refreshing and fun for them to experience on, you know, around, around the time of Halloween. What is the overall tone and how did you enhance it with music? The overall tone of werewolf by night is, is one at its center. It's got a huge heart, you know, it's got a huge heart. And that to me is always the most important thing of any story. What are you trying to say? And, 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 and how are you saying it through your characters, you know? And I wanted it to be something where people would relate to each of the characters and understand why they're doing what they're doing and not be so, you know, to, 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 to be little 
uh, uh, kitschy, not to be so black and white with the story, to have layers and to 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 delve deeper and understand what it is like to have an issue or a problem that you need help with. You know, what it is like, what does family mean to these characters? You know, family is a big central theme in this story. And what does that mean to them? And that's not something you normally delve into in a in a werewolf movie or in it. Usually it's 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 about just the scare and the horror of what's happening. But I wanted to kind of try and go a little deeper with that and 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 make these characters something other than two dimensional. Speaking of that. Um, how does the use of shadows and silhouettes enhance the scare element? The thing about horror movies is what you don't see is always far scarier than what you do see. And when you're dealing with something like the shadow of something, that to me instills much more fear than if I were just to show you the thing that was creating that shadow, because your brain is doing all that extra work, filling in what it is that you think you're seeing or what it could be. And every time you do that in a movie, I tell you that the, the scariest movies I have seen are the ones that don't show that much. And the classic example that we always go back to is Jaws, right? The less you saw of that shark, the more afraid you were. All you needed to hear was the music or see a, a shadow underneath the water or just sense that something was there and you were suddenly terrified. So for me, less is more. Tell us about the cast and what they bring to their role. Well, the cast of Werewolf by Night, I feel like I hit the jackpot. There was only one person in my mind who I wanted from ver from day one to play Jack in this, and that was Gael Garcia Barnell. And he and I had worked together on Coco prior to this. So I did get to know him a little bit. And it was, you know, I remember when I first started thinking about this, I was like, that was it. That was the only person I wanted because he has a huge heart. He has, he's very empathetic. And what you see is what you get. Like he is a really decent, good person. And I wanted this character to embody that, you know? And I thought if he says no to this, I have no idea who number two is going to be on this list. And thankfully he didn't say no. And it was a very similar thing with Laura Donnelly. Like, you know, when you're looking for somebody to play Elsa, you know, someone who can play, who can be strong, who can be vulnerable, who can also be smart, who can be, you know, uh, uh, and also be an incredible action hero. Like, that's a tough, you know, bill to fill. And and I, I, you know, as soon as I saw her in the Nevers, I was like, that's her. There she is. That's Elsa right there. <laughs> that's Elsa Bloodstone. And I, I, you know, they set us up with a meeting and I, I loved her instantly. I loved her and I loved working with her. She's brilliant. She, she can do it all. And she's hilarious and just everything you want in an actor. And, in a, and, and, you know, uh, so that was great. And then of course, for the character of Verusa, I mean, Harriet Sansom Harris killed it, killed it. I could tell you like on set watching her work, I was like, the editor Jeff Ford and I would be on set watching as as they were we were doing takes and I would just be laughing because and trying to hold back because she was so good and so arch and so over the top in the best way possible without being over the top you know she brought something to the role that felt so classic horror movie to me and I I will forever feel lucky to have had her in this in this film so you know and and then the the rest of the cast just filled it out from there and we got lucky on every single person we were just like uh, you know and just good people too good people what do you hope viewers will experience when they watch werewolf by night what i hope people will experience when they watch werewolf by night is well let me tell you this first day of shooting, I sat the entire cast in a big circle on the set. We made everyone else leave. Everyone left the building and it was just me and the cast. We sat in a circle and I said, okay, I'm going to go around. Let's introduce each other. Cause you know, no one knew each other. Whenever these things are coming together, most actors don't know each other already. I said, let's introduce ourselves. But after we introduce ourselves, you have to tell us a story of something that scared you as a kid. And everyone went around and told something, a movie that they saw that they still 
can feel how scared they were when they think of it. Uh, and everyone went around, told their version of that. And when it came back around to me, I said, okay, that's what we're here to do. We are here to create that scary moment for someone out there in the world today. We want to do that so that when they grow up, they're going to say, you know what scared me as a kid? Oh, the first time I sat down and watched Werewolf by Night. Like, I want to create that feeling of watching something that you sticks with you forever, you know, because I still have my list of things that I saw as a kid and they still affect me to this day. And not in a sadistic way, but in a fun, remembering the, how, how fun it is to be scared sometimes, you know, there's a fun in it that you can do. If you do it right, it can be very fun, but it'll stick with you. So, so if I had one wish for this, it would be to create that moment for the audience.